The opinions of Rob are his and his alone. This is Corey, and this is the Other Anthem Podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Rob. Welcome to episode 175 of the Other Anthem <laughs> Podcast, broadcasting to you across the country, uh, from across the, the globe, across the globe, uh, from the beautiful hashtag OTALA Studios in downtown Los Angeles, California. Hi, above the 110 freeway. We welcome you to today's show. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for rating. Thank you so much for telling other people. All these things are wonderful joys that you bestow upon us every single week. And um, after this episode, you may <laughs> not want to do that ever again. So <laughs> be careful. Here we go. I like, I like how we're already like before we even get into it, knowing that there's trouble brewing. Yes. Well, so there was a lot of things I wanted to talk about this week. Uh, Chris Pratt and Anna Ferris separating. I know. Oh, my God. Uh, Disney is pulling all of its streaming off of Netflix because it's building its own streaming service. Yeah. The Patriots, because they are so pretentious, bought their own plane so they don't have to fly uh, domestic anymore. Yeah. But none of those things are going to make it into the discussion today. Sorry, guys, if you're looking forward to any, any of, of that. those news. Yes. None of that's going to happen. Uh, but let's start out uh, with some uh, some side stuff that I do want to talk about, which is we got to see the Orioles. Well, I got to see the Orioles finally this season on Monday. Yes. Uh, and I got to see them the following two nights, which was less <laughs> Less fun. Less noteworthy. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, but finally the Orioles made their way to California. Yes. Uh, we made the trip down. And I would like to say something up front. Uh, I have been known to be a, uh, what, what can we call it? Let's just say a hater. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I love the Angels Express. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're not, that's what you're a hater of, public transportation. Not always, though. I mean, like, there's certainly yeah. public transportation out there that I've, I've enjoyed and right. I like. Uh, but, you know, like, I, I've been so burned by the light rail, I yes. think is the problem. Yeah. I was burned so bad. Uh, and I just thought that any kind of train to the stadium was going to be a horrible, wretched mess. Yep. Uh, but the Angels Express, which is a train that goes from Union Station directly to the Angels Stadium in Anaheim, mm-hmm. was uh, easy and simple and cheap enough. Yes. And uh, 350 each way. Yeah. It's almost the light rail. And it actually got you there conveniently. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, you didn't have to stop for traffic lights or yeah. other cars or anything like that. You just moved the whole way. It was uh, 30 miles, which is half or double the distance that I would be taking the light rail. Yeah. And at the same speed. Right. Basically. 45 minutes for 30 miles as opposed to 45 minutes for 14 miles. <laughs> if that. If yeah. you're coming all the way from Lutherville to Monium. But uh, and it drops you off. Almost as conveniently as the light rail in Baltimore. I would argue that we were as far from our seats as mm. the light rail is was from our season ticket seats back in Baltimore. It really is that convenient. It's a give or take, but it's close enough. You crawl, have to cross that parking lot. But yeah. You literally walk out and you're at the stadium. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we got there uh, even taking the last possible train. We got there way in time for the uh, national anthem to be sung. Mm-hmm. Corey offended everyone in the stadium by <laughs> screaming "O" oh, at the top of his lungs. As we do, as we do. And I, this is what I, one thing I was trying to express to people. Like, the next day, I was telling the story, and I was like, "You guys, th- this is the whole name of the podcast. O oh, the anthem. You're owing the anthem. Yeah. This is what we do, and nobody at my work understood. So." <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so Corey did that. Everyone around us. I like the the fight we got into on the train too, where it's just like, yeah, except for when they desecrate the anthem. And I was just like, hey, bud. I was wearing my O the anthem shirt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was like, hey, bud. And I like pointed at it. He's just like, oh. And we uh, did. We met a lot. There was a lot of Orioles fans there. Yeah. Uh, I guess if you only have three chances to see the team, you want to come down and see the team while you can. So uh, it's worthwhile to uh, do that. We and I think a lot of people, a lot of people weren't going to come for the businessman special like I did. Oh yeah, uh, a Wednesday afternoon game. Nothing like that. Thirty <laughs> Pacific time. Nothing like roasting in the sun on a Wednesday afternoon. I don't even. I, I maintain that people don't even wake up in California until at least twelve thirty. Generally, I mean, I would prefer <laughs> not to. But um, in any event, we all went Monday and uh, had a great time. And uh, Manny Machado hits a grand slam. Yeah. To put us up by four. Unfortunately, put us up so high that we did not get a chance to see the rally monkey no. in that game because we were. It was too far. There's rules to this, as you said. So <laughs> and the they I, I felt gypped of the rally monkey the following day. Right. Right. Because they didn't show like a rally monkey production. They showed just him with the sign, like jumping up and down. I was right. just like, oh, come on. <laughs> I came all this if way. I, if, I'm lo- 
<laughs> if we're gonna lose, at least show me a full on rally monkey production. Yeah. But um, and alas, now Wednesday, uh, there was not really even a chance for the rally monkey no. on Wednesday. Things got though. Ugly. Thankfully, uh, in the shade, it's not like a death trap. So. <laughs> <laughs> Big on you, Anaheim, for having shade. Yeah. Um, but so uh, it was exciting to see baseball. I can now say that, again, we've kept up the string of the last uh, 15 years of actually seeing Orioles baseball. It was, there was some concern that this year might be the first year that I actually hadn't been able to get to a game in um, in like 15 years. So very happy that uh, we were able to get that done. Yeah. Uh, and that I can get Corey to give a compliment to public transportation. That's always a plus. That's a winner. Yeah, of course. Uh, meeting other people from Baltimore and around. The most common thing conversation I had during that game was like, how long you been here? Like, yeah. nobody in Los Angeles is an Orioles fan who grew up here. It's, you were from Baltimore <laughs> and you moved this way. I'm, I'm from Orange, California, so I was looking for a baseball team that had orange in their colors. The Giants That's, are right uh, up the road. No, no, no. no. I'm nope. going to go with the <laughs> Yeah. I um, like the American League. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the other discussion we had on the train, which is like, oh, yeah, but, you know, our records are about even uh, the Angels and the Orioles. And then, like, listen, uh, we have to play the AL East yeah. all the time. Yeah. If you want to play the AL East all the time, then you, we can talk about records being yeah, even. Yeah, the, so. the A's and the Blue Jays aren't the same team. Yeah, yeah. But it's a, it's a different it's a I different would love level. to play the A's yeah. six times a year. That would be fantastic. Way more than six. Yeah. <laughs> 16 times a year. But, uh, of course, the, there's more news from Baltimore that we have to discuss, so we can take a trip on down to the Baltimore corner. Where you get the straight dope. That's right. Uh, and Corey was very excited this week and then almost immediately disappointed. Yeah, so uh, for the first time in nearly a month, Catherine Pugh ca- crawled out of her hole. Right. Uh, the one where she lives with various boardroom execs <laughs> and not the people who elected her. Right. Um, and uh, unleashed her plan. For fixing crime in the city. And I I would compel each of you, especially if you live in the, the Baltimore area, to go to Catherine Pugh's Twitter and look for her plan. It's it's laid out in like a PDF and you can go through it. Yeah. And it literally looks like uh, if you walked into like a high school civics class and said, how can we fix crime? And just took every single bullet point that they gave you right. and put it in a PDF and released it to the public. Like, it is there a plan. No, it's to, technically speaking, yes. it's a plan. But it's like things like, we need to make the streets safer. Oh, great. How? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Anytime now. Or uh, uh, the, the big part of the plan was uh, free college education to Baltimore City Community College to any graduating senior in the uh, city. Right. Which is... A nice first step. It is. Um, But I would also argue that you need to keep people off the streets from selling drugs way before they're 18. Because most of these people already have a record by the time they're 18. And by the way, no plan how to get more graduating seniors. Just that if you survive and you do graduate. If you happen to graduate and you can't afford college, well, now you can. You can go to Baltimore City Community College, which is nationally ranked as uh, something i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure that there's some sort of ranking <laughs> in uh, stats involved. convenient to catherine pew right. weekly baltimore city community college is right above harvard in terms of and she uh she gave uh a, she gave a public speech she came out uh no comments about no real comments about the violence other than like well you know it's been a violent time she was really happy about uh the work of the baltimore ceasefire something that didn't have anything to do with her right yeah um, and she was not saying anything about Baltimore p- body cam footage. Nope. Uh, she was not going to, the, e- everything in there was about like, we have to work better with the police department. We already have. Whereas everyone I think has basically agreed at this point that we need to shut down the police department that we have start fresh and just hope for the best. Yes. Yeah. Let's fire everybody and rehire the ones that we can rehire. As we've talked about on, uh, episode 172, 173, uh, probably 174 as well. Uh, just basically anything from the last month or so. Yeah, that's been kind spurts. of a discussion. Yeah. Um, and the, I, the I, let's uh, talk just a little bit. I know we didn't really talk about this in the pre-show, but uh, the Baltimore ceasefire surprisingly successful. Now, not totally because there was two, there were two shootings, but compared to that the weekend before where there was like seven or you know, I, I guess my my thing is that. Uh, at this point, if you want to make some sort of drastic change to how the city is is operated in terms of like crime and violence and everything like that, I feel like there needs to be 
it needs to go further. I, yeah. I, I, I can, I, uh, I applaud everybody involved. I think that it's a lovely sentiment, but I don't think it necessarily went far enough to keep people from being violent or. Well, what else are they supposed to do? I mean, they, they literally, it's civilians saying, let's do something because yeah. Catherine Pugh hasn't been seen in a month. The police are only coming out to play basketball with 10 year olds so that they look good yeah. or, you know, planning evidence. That's the other thing they seem right. to be doing. Um, but like, what else can a civilian do? I mean, they had essentially during the ceasefire, they had a safe streets like program where there were people out on street corners and you know calling the police, which you really shouldn't do. That's that one that was a mistake. Like. That was yeah. a problem with the. But uh, yeah, I I mean, the organizers were split between kind of the more far leftists who were just like, you know, we should go out there and patrol the streets and do the thing, and then you had like the um, what was that group that did the New York subways in the eighties and nineties, like. The angels, some kind of an- guardian angels, something like that. Yeah, yeah, basically that that we're going out like guardian angels and just uh, looking and becoming witnesses and calling police and thinking that like if there's a witness, there's not going to be a shooting. I mean, the problem is that like the the things that could really do something per se are also like extremely dangerous and I wouldn't yeah. recommend just random people do like walking like, down the street with an AR-15 or like hassle drug dealers like yeah. say like get out of here nobody wants you in this neighborhood that doesn't end well no no um, they have guns and you do yeah, not that's... that I mean like hypothetically that would make the if you could get people off the streets from doing drug related activity that would make a big dent in the amount of violence that's going on yeah but it's also something that even the police aren't trained properly for so and they have there's guns. No, they there, just shoot people. There's no help if you know old, old, uh, old Jane's walking down the street, going like, "Oh, you drug dealers need to go home. It's a new day in Baltimore." Like on the other side, though, I think that any drug dealer seeing like an older woman would. I don't think you can like lash out at her. Yeah, like, get out of here, old lady. You can't kill her. I right. mean, that's just in poor sport, but. But I mean, like, it, I think it does discourage the guy who's coming to buy the drugs when he sees like grandma on the corner, like, "Don't you buy these drugs? Get out of here!" Like, eh, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, if there was like a people of Walmart for people buying drugs in the city, like, if, there is an idea. If you if you just uh hit up on rooftops and took pictures of everybody who bought drugs yeah. and then posted their in, their picture online. So that everyone could see, because I mean, like part of part of the uh, uh, when you're when you're young and you're trying to buy, like let's say pot, yeah, you you go through all of these steps to make sure that your tracks are covered nicely, right? Uh, oh, I'm going over to my friend's house tonight. <laughs> yes, and then you coordinate with the friend that if there's a call, like you know, like oh yeah, Corey just went to Seven Eleven, he'll be here in a minute, right? Uh, or uh, Corey, wait. So this is a personal story. No, from I'm your just life. using me as an example oh, for okay. this. I clearly, gotcha. yeah, sure. Um, because drugs are bad. <laughs> Don't do drugs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but here's it, my. It, my but cons- I, I'm saying, like, it, if if you went through all the steps to try and cover your tracks, and then there was a picture of you online buying heroin right. from a drug dealer on the street, then, you know, you you run the risk of like having having that ruin your life like yeah. having your parents find out and grounding you forever or like whatever comes along with being dr- buying the drugs you know my bigger concern though is that we know that the police are using social media to keep tabs on people and mm. how many people are going to get arrested because they pop up on this website and then facebook's magic says would you like to tag Corey baker <laughs> and the cops are like well let's go find this Corey baker character yeah. and i mean like damn it the, he lives in california now well i mean but they, they like they put you know just systematically I mean, playing devil's advocate they find your name on a picture mm-hmm. they then put your tag in a uh in the the uh automatic program so when any of the number of license readers on the backs of the car mm-hmm. pass by your car it gives them a red flag they follow you until you like go across the white line a little bit or you do 51 in a 50 pull yeah. you over search your car and you're ruining lives which is not the intent of the website the website is no, to get people to get help but well i mean the the idea of the website would be that uh Maybe if you shame these, like, you know, like if you wanted to shut down strip clubs, if you took the picture of everybody who walked outside of the strip club yeah. and posted it online, then <laughs> I'd be proud. I'd be like, yeah, that's me. Oh, dude, I'm on the website. Well, no, but yeah, then, but then you think like, you know, like what if your what if your mother caught you on like walking out of the 
with like a week's worth of pictures on this. I'm just saying <laughs> every day, yeah, every day. Luckily, I wear every the day same, for the gentleman special. I wear the same black shirt every day. I'm like, Ma, it's <laughs> clearly just the same night. They just took a bunch of different pictures. I don't, I don't know why they're saying I was there every night. That's not something I would do. Um, but you know, I, I, I don't think shaming is the way to go. I do. I think that the drug dealers, if you took pictures of drug dealers, of them doing hand to hand transactions that would discourage them from doing it. But then once again, the cops are going to use those pictures. They're going to roll cur. They're going to, you know, like roll the corners and right. arrest people. And as it's been widely said, my general policy is do not help the police in anything they are trying to do. Cause you're going to get somebody killed. And if they do roll a corner and they don't find drugs, now we know Baltimore city is likely to just like, all right, where's this good place for a stash around here? Create a stash. And then film it as if it was a real thing. I, I mean, like, at this point, you know, like, maybe just legalize drugs. I mean, we made the argument that uh, Bunny didn't have yeah. such a bad idea on the wire. I mean, it's not a, it's not the best idea, but it's not it's better than most. Yeah. I, it's I mean, better than whatever Pew just came up with. Right. And uh, the uh, New Amsterdam areas yeah. are really horrible. But you know what? There are parts of Baltimore that we could just be like, oh, mm, you know what? Let's just put Ooh. it right here. Yeah. It's already it's already like abandoned. Um, let's just stick an area here and say, okay, free reign. And what's honestly like, even the wire didn't answer the question of like, what's the harm? There was the politicians coming in saying, we can't do this. You've legalized drugs, but nobody was just like, this is a really bad idea. You should not have done this. They're like, it's politically unsound for us to support right, this right, kind right. of thing. And. It kind of, I mean, I know, of course, it's fiction, um, but listen, if everybody can cite the West Wing when they're talking about like how to be presidential, I think we can cite the wire about how to fix a crime problem because you know what? Nothing else has worked. Yeah. Let's try something at least. I mean, uh, a, a legitimate bold step needs to be taken. Yeah. And uh, I would prefer to ask, uh, for lack of a better term, scientists in the matter, yeah. like, uh, uh like pathologists and uh, people of the sort who would be able to come up with a plan that would speak to base means and fixing problems that uh, affect large swaths of the population. Didn't Bunny do that though? I feel like there were social scientists there who were like, well, yeah, when they in the, the in the show, yeah. they talked about it after the fact, right? They, they weren't involved in the plan going in. If they would have mm. been involved in the plan from the beginning. Yeah. But then they then, never would have did it. Yeah. It, it, you can't, right, right, you right. can't legalize drugs. It's yeah. uh, clearly as we can tell in California, when the federal government says a drug's illegal, there's no way you could possibly find a way around that. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I saw a really cute dispensary on the way. Uh, <laughs> it's, a joke. it's a medical dispensary. They dispense medicine there. Yeah. Clearly, right. it's totally different from the Schedule like 1 Like Prozac and... I mean, it acts like Prozac, I'm <laughs> sure. Uh, but yeah, could totally different from the Schedule 1 narcotic that gets sold right across the border in Arizona. Yeah. Here, medicinal, medicine, uh, sold at dispensary there, Schedule 1 narcotic, which will put you in jail for a long time. Yeah. Meanwhile, like... Uh, Walking down the street, it's you see somebody smoking, and you're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, okay." You have to do the sniff test. Yeah. It's like, uh, how brazen is this guy being? It's a hand rolled cigarette. Okay, we're leaning one way or the other. Okay, yeah, yeah smoke <laughs> a pot. That's how that works. It's all um, right. What's what? I, but I mean, like at this point, it, 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 I, it, so we'll get into this a little bit with Charlottesville. Yeah, but uh, I maintain that part of the problem with uh, weed in particular and other drugs is that you worry about like there's the reefer madness side of it where right. like somebody's going to get high and go crazy and go you know like start stabbing people randomly or something like that like weird things are going to happen if people are on drugs if I'm I am so not concerned about a guy walking down the street smoking a joint right uh, if I had a child and the child was just like that cigarette smells funny I'd be like yeah it sure does <laughs> Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like there's ways I could just get around that. Like, sure. you don't have to have my, discussion. yeah, my child is not going to be going to be ruined by the guy who's like, you know, smoking a smoking a joint walking down the street. Yeah. You know, but is your child going to be ruined by the guy doing the Baltimore lean? See, that's more of a problem to me. The, the guy who who's like completely out of his mind on heroin. Right. Is like way more of a trouble than. The guy who's like walking around smoking a joint. And but I, I don't think the guy out of his mind on heroin is dangerous. I don't think no. it's dangerous to you. He is something you have to explain to your kid. Why is that man doubled over at the waist, resting yeah. his chin on his own shoes? 
Um, but otherwise, it's it's not dangerous. I mean, there are some drugs. For there, which well, clearly- I mean, there are some people though who who in combination with other problems like mental health issues, right? Yeah, where if they are you know on drugs or coming off of drugs, that can be a more a more dangerous proposition. But isn't it better to put them all in one part of the city where you can be like, listen, if you where don't want to keep an it, eye on them. Yeah. If you don't want to <laughs> literally like, again, referring back to the show, the cops were all at every exit of that place. Yeah. Just watching and keeping things. They don't give me a reason see, to come but, in here. See, but the, the other problem is that do you trust the police to be able to quietly stand outside no, and not metal this is after the fire, everybody yeah. and then rehire some good, we only bring in the good cops. Yeah. yeah. And then just be like, listen, we're just going to let them do what they're going to do. And you're not being judged on your arrest <laughs> numbers. You're not being judged on all the things you've been judged on. Just do good policing. That's it. You know, I was just thinking, uh, they, they always talk about police as good apples and bad apples. Yeah. You know how they talk about uh, it's good for forest fires to burn? Yeah. And just like take care of all the dead wood and then yeah. anything good that will grow again will come again. Comes from the ashes. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it's thought. time what, to burn down the Baltimore police. No, no, department? I wasn't saying that. Clearly, Listen, no. I'm the just saying, thoughts of Corey are his <laughs> and his alone. Any acts took, of arson. He took my he took my words out of out of context, but I mean, he whatever. sounded we can like you were setting it. up a metaphor. But then all of a sudden, I was like, "Oh, he's talking about real things he wants to do." I don't, uh, I don't really understand. I don't get it. Uh, but uh, speaking of West Wing, um, <laughs> speaking of fire and brimstone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the things we had to get to this week uh, is what has been going on with North Korea and President Trump. Um, and I think if you haven't been following, the easiest way that you can um, you can understand what's been happening is if you've ever seen two 10-year-old boys and they're neighbors mm-hmm. and they don't necessarily like each other and they get into a shouting match of like, get off my property. And then like the one of the guys, like walk, they're like walking up and down the property line that doesn't really exist. It's grass across the whole thing. But yeah. They're just walking up and down this imaginary line, uh, shouting things at each other. That's basically what we've been doing with uh, North Korea for the last week. So, would you say that's an accurate uh, that's an accurate depiction? Uh, yes and no. Okay. I mean, I I would say that the the there's not really like a line that separates these two ten year olds. Sure. Okay. It's it's, it's more. Ocean. Yeah. It it it's more like a. a Two people from rival schools who feel like they have to hate each other for some reason. Okay. And, like, everyone else at their school is, like, talking. It's like, yeah, yeah, go over there and tell Kim he's an idiot. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to tell him he's an idiot. And then, you know, little Donnie walks across the street to the other school and he's just like, hey, Kim, you're an idiot. And then runs back and it's just like, I told him, I told him. And then Kim says something across the line. And then it's just Mm -hmm. like a whole bunch. It's just rabble rousing, essentially, at the end of it all. Just just to correct it, Kim is actually his last name, not his first name. Oh, I know. But I'm saying. Jong. mm, Yeah, I know. But I'm saying, you know, if the kid's name is Kim, it makes it easier for the Americanized audience to hear the name (laughs) and think. Go over there. Tell Jong. Go tell Jong. Tell Jong Un. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So uh, if you've not been watching the news this week. Um. There was a bit of a kerfuffle uh, about <laughs> good word, uh, and North Korea has essentially announced, and I think it's been confirmed by international community, those who do these kind of things, uh, that they have miniaturized a nuclear weapon. So now they have a small scale nuclear weapon. Um, for I guess to go back a little bit further in time, it's really easy to do a. It's not easy, but it's relatively easy to do a nuclear weapons test. The Trinity test the United States did uh, out in the desert, the first atomic bomb ever exploded. Uh, the, the one you see footage of all the time, right? Yeah. Uh, the The actual bomb itself was really big. Uh, it was like two stories tall, and it was like forty feet wide. Because on that scale, you can do nuclear fission. It's it's basically putting a nuclear reactor up in this thing and just making it go critical. But getting that into a bomb casing is really hard. No plane can take off with something that big. Yeah. And you can't fire it with a rocket. So it's all about miniaturizing it down. Now, while they're doing the nuclear weapons test up in the mountains of North Korea, you can make the assumption that what they're doing is what we did with Trinity. They're just like building a bomb, getting it operational, and it's not actual a functional size. And then blowing it up in a mountain and being like, yeah, see, we have nuclear weapons. The problem, though, is it's inevitable that once you figure out a thing, uh, just like phones, 
eventually they're just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And yeah. now that we can get pornography on them, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm <laughs> like, thing is, maybe if we can figure out how to make uh, nuclear pornography, the things will get so big that we can't use rockets anymore. That's my solution uh, for the entire crisis. <laughs> that's, I think. that's another one of, just let Rob be in charge and he'll figure it all out eventually. Yeah. Uh, so the news came this week that they've miniaturized a nuclear weapon uh, and they've made it small enough that it could uh, theoretically be fired by their intermediate um, ballistic missile and, of course, by their intercontinental ballistic missile. Mm. So uh, the intermediate one is the the more trying one because that one they've tested several times. We know that all of the stages operate. Uh, we know that it has a operating distance that could hit Guam, uh, Philippines, Japan, South Korea, any of these like very close by targets. Can't hit anything that's specifically American. I mean, Alaska. Aleutian Islands of Alaska or fucking Guam. Okay? Yeah. How much did I hear this week from people saying like, well, it's not like Guam's in America. Uh, you know what? I heard the opposite and... Uh, a lot, and it. Uh, I'm kind of upset about this. It's it's like uh, the be- the false outrage of people who have literally never heard of Guam. Uh, like they're just like North Korea is gonna try and pr- attack one of our protectorates. We need to get them. Yeah, it's just like all right. Do me a favor. Name one thing you know about Guam. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh wait, it's an island. Uh, what name a city in Guam? Well, there are no real cities in Guam. So it's a trick question, you idiot. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, there, Nate, I mean, there's, there's like the military base. It's like the uh, episode of the critic where Duke Phillips is running for president. Yeah. And he goes, uh, 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 what are you going to do about the, the Guam primary? And he goes, I don't even know what to call them. The Guamies, the <laughs> Guami bears. The <laughs> but uh, keep in mind, by the way, that now that we, they're being threatened from nuclear annihilation from Kim Jong-un. Yeah. Uh, they did not have a chance to elect. President Trump. No. Because they're, they get, while they vote in primaries yeah. uh, for the individual parties to pick the party's choice, they cannot vote in federal elections because they are not a state, essentially. Uh, much like uh, Washington, D.C. So, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, but nobody cares about D.C. Right, of course. They shouldn't be allowed to vote anyway. So, uh, anyway, so the advancements this week are that uh, they, they my, can't my my literal My literal rule for, for uh, voting as far as like uh, being able to elect a president or a senator or a yeah. congressman is anybody but DC. <laughs> and when DC is like, Hey, come on, we're, we're us citizens too. I'm just like, no, 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 no. That's it. Uh, make sure you send your comments <laughs> and queries to Corey any, at or the anthem.com. Any one of the 400,000 people in DC who are upset with me, or more likely the million people who aren't from DC, but are going to get upset anyway, because yeah. of, because somebody said DC shouldn't have voting rights or statehood. Fuck it. I don't care. 443-219-7595 is the number that you can text and call. And you can actually do that right now. If you're watching the live stream at facebook.com forward slash hear the anthem, you can make a comment in the uh, into the comment section. We're going to read those out. You can text or call the listener line, 443-219-7595, and be part of the show. If you're watching this on Tuesday, make sure you do go over to Facebook, turn notifications on for the video uh, so that you see when we are live casting and you can join uh, the show as we record. But uh, to get back to North Korea, so... Then uh, Kim Jong-un says, uh, you know, uh, we have nuclear weapons and we're not afraid to use them. And uh, Trump says, if you keep threatening uh, American interests, we're going to bring down fire and fury like the, the world, world has, has never, never seen. seen yeah. uh, which makes me think maybe he watched Game of Thrones this week and he was just all worked up about dragons or something. Yeah. Um, and so then Kim Jong-un says, well, we're going to nuke Guam. And uh, Trump says, we have uh, our military responses locked and loaded. So... I like to imagine. I like to imagine that there was a, a moment where uh, Trump heard North Korea say, "Well, we're going to bomb Guam," and he was just like, "Oh, good, they're moving on to somebody else." <laughs> and then somebody, somebody deep within the recess of the White House was like, "Excuse me, Guam's part of us," and it's like, "What?" <laughs> But um, <laughs> how much shit do I have to deal with this president? Seriously, I just want to golf, man. Come <laughs> I just on, just want to go to New Jersey and golf. Um, but yeah, so in the end, uh, the rhetoric has been dialed up a lot. And as it stands here on Saturday, a couple of things have happened. Um, a friend of the show, Roberto, asked in the um, in the comments section, can we talk a little bit about the countermeasures if they were to say fuck it and launch the thing? Uh, and basically, this is what's been happening now. So South Korea is on high alert. Uh, they're always kind of on alert. But when these things happen, it goes up to like, you know, DEFCON uh, 1. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, 
which by the way, DEF CON counts downward in importance. So typically we're at DEF CON 4 or 5 and DEF CON 1 would be state of war. So yeah. um, Japan has moved their uh, their rocket intercept uh, missiles to four locations that are on the western coast uh, so that they could try to intercept uh, a missile. And we were talking about this a couple of days ago about how once if the rocket, if the missile was to get to stage three, we're kind of out of luck at that point. Yeah. Because you can intercept it in stage one from the ground uh, in South Korea. If they saw a launch and one of the uh, Patriot system missiles launched, uh, they could probably shoot it down. Um, they have, I think, the Patriot 4 in Japan, which would also be able to catch it in the second stage. Uh, and then our greater... Uh, anti-missile defense system, which is in the Pacific, theoretically can shoot down things in the uh, second stage as well. But once you hit third stage, uh, that is suborbital, and no missile is going to be able to catch a missile that is going suborbital. Yeah. Um, then the it's coming back down, and the efforts to shoot a missile that's returning to Earth gets very difficult. Uh, it's really hard to shoot it going up, but you have kind of gravity working in your favor. Like, it's fighting just to get out of the atmosphere. Once it's coming down, then it's just gravity and the rocket pushing it towards the ground. Right. And um, usually it ditches the later stages, and there's no fuel on board. So you really, if you hit a rocket going up, the hope is if I nick it, it's going to blow the rocket up and we're going to be fine. Coming down, it's just the warhead. So you yeah. really have to hit it straight on, and it's very difficult. Uh, so like, someone asked me this week, what are the odds? And, and I think we're somewhere around the... 30% that there's going to be some kind of exchange between North Korea and either the the allies of the United States or the United States. Like, I imagine that some artillery will be exchanged across the Korean border at minimum. That's that's not uncommon, though. Yeah, and uh, that they, uh, they'll do more rocket tests. But for those of you on the West Coast uh, here with us in Pacific time, um, keep in mind that the ICBM that the North Korea has developed can hit targets in the Western United States. And... The miniature like St. Louis West, right? Yeah, St. Louis and Chicago were both uh, within range of this ICBM, and with the miniaturized nuclear weapon, theoretically, they could put one nuclear warhead on a rocket and fire it off, and it could hit the continental U.S. Now, yeah. we got a lot of empty space. That's one benefit, and we don't know how good their aiming systems are. That's the one question: is how good can they aim uh, the thing? But you would think that if they're going to dare launch an intergalactic intercontinental ballistic missile, uh, they're going to try and hit a population base. Right. So Los Angeles, San Francisco, uh, Seattle, perhaps like Portland or yeah. Denver, I guess. Like those types of places would be high up on the list. And not to show preference to California, but uh, LA is an expansive city. And it's the kind of thing where like you don't have to hit it exactly on point yeah get it in the area and you if it lands at the beaches or if it lands in downtown or if it lands in the Va uh, san fernando valley or sun valley or out in the san gabriel valley like any of these things people would be like nuclear blast in, in los angeles yeah if i mean even if it hit like anaheim or out in orange county it would still be close enough yeah san francisco is the same way oakland san francisco uh silicon valley san jose area there's a lot of cities in a small area yeah. just lob it in that direction and hope that you don't hit the bay that's the right get land somewhere um and like i said it, once it's out of the second stage then it's basically the waiting game of can we shoot it down there's there's a couple ways that they can do that um none of which are very reliable it's more like duck and cover and um hope for the best so mm -hmm. uh again i i put the chances at like low but sustained of something happening an actual nuclear exchange i have no idea but uh, one of the things that we talked about is do you think trump would preemptively strike pyongyang i would hope not i i really i mean the pro the the huge fucking for lack of a better term trump card in this whole thing is that with kim jong-un you've been and kim jong-il before him you you had this I don't know what that crazy maniac is capable of doing. Yeah. Like he could wake up any morning and decide to just launch a nuclear missile towards us. Right. I mean, that was always part of the deal We where we were unsure of what was going to happen. Uh, now, I mean, like at least before you thought you had a, a pretty good idea of what George W. Bush or Barack Obama or Clinton or anybody would have done before. I literally have no idea what the fuck Trump's thinking yeah. any of the time. So if he decided... Th that, you know, if, if fucking Hannity goes off on, like, we should just level North Korea one day on the show, 
I can't guarantee you that I wouldn't wake up in the morning to hear that North Korea was hit by something and that something is coming back our way. Our yes. way at the moment. Like, well, and that's that's the thing is that the these decentralized. I mean, it's a very centralized government, but command and control is decentralized. They have rockets on tri- uh, rail lines. They have car or truck based rockets. They have ground based rockets. So, if a nuclear, let's say that we could get a flight of B fifty twos from Missouri where they're stationed all the way across the globe without being uh, detected, and they do bomb Pyongyang, yeah, whether conventional or nuclear. I guarantee you that there has been an order that if there's any attack on North Korea at all, just launch all the missiles. Yeah. They're already pre-targeted. Just launch everything. And the idea that the old idea of warfare is you cut off the head. If we can just destroy Moscow, we can avoid most of the casualties. Yeah, they'll fire off a couple of missiles, but we can stop most of the nuclear exchange. Right. We might lose Atlanta or we might lose, uh, you know, Boise, Idaho, uh, but we're going to be able to save most of the country. Yeah. That doesn't work here because it's so decentralized that he, uh, Kim can basically uh, send out an order like, hey, uh, if something happens to me, launch all the missiles. And yeah. then it doesn't matter because no matter how quickly you and destroy we don't it. E- we don't even know like what what the – I mean the problem is uh, with North Korea specifically is that we don't know what the, what the command structure looks like in the sense that if Kim just chokes on a hot dog in his house, like – are there people who are who are sending messages throughout the entire internal command saying like somebody killed our leader? Right. Let's somebody launch the, the missiles. Leader. Yeah, yeah. The CIA. I mean, they talk about the CIA and everybody's a spy. Every Westerner who comes there is a yeah. spy. Next thing you know, he's chokes accidentally, and it's a CIA plot, and let's attack America. Right. And the difference is again. We don't know what's coming out of our own White House. Yeah. And I keep arguing with people and saying like, listen, Kim is exactly the same as his father and his grandfather. They're unstable. They're, uh, they um, don't care about the lives of their own people. So w- does somebody was like, does he really want to kill everyone in North Korea? I mean, he's starving them to death right now. Yeah. Why would he care if there was a war? Like, he, of course he wouldn't. The difference, though, is we don't know what they're, well, one, we don't know what Trump's going to do, but also he has no diplomats in the White House. Yeah. And I compared it to Dr. By the way, real quick, yeah. again, uh, and one of the sh- most shocking and stupidest things I've ever heard said out loud, um, Trump speaking about Russia sending back U.S. diplomats, uh, saying, yeah. thanking Putin, thanking Putin for clearing our payroll of these. We've been trying to cut down payroll. Thank you for getting rid of these diplomats. Yeah. Number one, not how it works. These these people are still on the payroll. Uh, that's just uh, above anything else. Number two, um, we need those people yeah. <laughs> there. We already have so few people working in the State Department. As it is, we need everybody we can. Uh, and number three, did anybody just hear what he fucking said? Like it's it's thanks, boss. Yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. Like all right, no, no, I just can't. I'm so I'm so like lost for words with him sometimes. Like, yeah. well, and that's the the important thing. The kind of uh, side point is I compared it to Doctor Strangelove. There are no diplomats. It's all military guys like encouraging yeah. the president to I, his chief of staff, his ex military, um, his obviously the DOD head secretary is uh, Mad Dog Mattis, and he's ex military. He has a lot of ex military and guys who think that they know how the military works. Like, too scared to actually go into military service, but yeah. really understand the military. And that's a bad combination. When you have no diplomats who are saying, let's calm this down. He's not really going to attack you. He, he just needs to have the last word. Just let him have the last word, and this will be done. But when you respond, he's going to respond to you. And then you're going to respond to him, and then he's going to respond to you. It yeah. just gets worse. Um, and that's what happens when you have a State Department that has 10% of the employees in it. Nobody is there to, to caution the president on using diplomacy. Luckily, though, China today has come out and asked for caution. They've told North Korea they're not going to back them if there's a strike. And they've warned the United States against striking um, preemptively. Yeah. Uh, most, most of the countries of Europe, France and Germany and uh, the UK specifically, have said we need to calm things down and they cut the rhetoric and uh, let's actually have a discussion. Um, the only people that, that are not uh, showing calm or asking for calm are really Japan and South Korea. And I think that comes from a place of fear more than anything else. Yeah. They, they are worried. That well, they don't want to say something that would antagonize North Korea. Right. But they also don't want to show weakness that 
somehow it, it's, it's better to now. just say nothing and just and just let that right so uh so we'll have to see how this plays out in a few weeks if uh this may or may not be the last episode if nuclear <laughs> weapon goes off in downtown if that LA. if that's true it's been a real pleasure, sir. It's been a pleasure. Been a pleasure serving with you. Uh, and up until this very moment, <laughs> yes. where it might not be anymore. Yes, after this, <laughs> this might be the great note to go out on. So, uh, another thing that uh, has been developing this week, uh, there was developing today. Developing today specifically, uh, there was a rally that had been planned. Um, it was the Unite the Right rally uh, in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, if you guys haven't seen anything about this week, uh, I have to encourage you to get on Twitter. It was not on mainstream media at all. And until the events today, there was no plan to cover anything yeah. that was happening there. Uh, and if one certain event hadn't happened, they probably would not have covered anything there. Uh, but basically, uh, every group on the far right, uh, the alt-right, if you will, uh, neo-Nazis, the KKK, um, uh, identity, identity Europe, uh, Europa, all of these uh, white supremacist groups, and nationalist groups, yeah, and and just nationalist uh, American groups uh, decided to get together in a show of solidarity. One to cut their differences and say, "Hey, uh, let's all start working together," which is mm -hmm. you know clearly a good sign. Um, and as David Duke put it, they, they want to uh, to manifest the uh, promises of Trump during his election. So there's that too. Um, but they also wanted to protest the removal of a Robert E. Lee statue from uh, Emancipation Park, formerly Lee Park, uh, in, in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. Yeah. And of course, uh, this cannot go unchecked. So uh, the far left, the Antifa or anti-fascist, uh, organized their own counter protest uh, to, to confront them. Now, the event started last evening, uh, as we're recording this, Friday evening, where all of these white supremacists got their tiki torches from Kmart, um, where you'll also be able to get uh, the Orioles' uh, new home jerseys. I'm sorry. Before we, we go into all the things that are probably going to get us on <laughs> new lists. I'm on all the lists already. Uh, I, I would like to make just a quick statement about the uh, Players players Appreciation Weekend in the, in the MLB. Sure. Uh, I'm a fun guy. I like to have fun. Mm-hmm. I am perfectly all right with uh, there being a player's appreciation weekend where you can put like XFL slogans on the back of your jerseys. It's fine with me. My problem is these are the ugliest fucking jerseys <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> like it really, it looks like uh, just enough of a, 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 it's Kmart jerseys. It's exactly what it is. It's somebody bought 150,000 random jerseys and just slapped an Orioles logo on it. Yeah. Uh, and I'm somebody who owns many Orioles jerseys and a lot of shirts like, and a lot of shirts. Yeah. I am not going to buy any of these. They look so bad and so disgusting. I'd rather be dead. That's okay. It. Yeah. Is that the extent of the, uh, well, and, and, and just all of them are ugly. It's not even like the Orioles are the only ones who are ugly. Like every single one of these jerseys is disgusting and ugly and terrible. Uh, and I don't get why you can't like it, you know, the Yankees, like, just have pinstripe jerseys with names on the back. Like, just do it for the weekend. Have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. But just have the regular Yankee jersey. Have you the regular have Oriole jersey. jersey. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, let them, like, design logo. Or, like, give them each, like, their 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 jersey. Like, a white Orioles jersey with, uh, you know, like, for Machado, it's, like, Mr. Miami on the back. Right. And then give them a Sharpie and let them, like, draw on it or something. I don't care. Like, do, do that. Like, don't don't give me something that looks like, uh, you remember those uh, vest jerseys from, like, the Cincinnati Reds in, like, the late oh, yeah, 90s? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that look like those, only the minor league knockoff version of it. That's what they, they do look like minor league jerseys. That's yeah. really what it is. Right. So, un, it, not well made the minor league jerseys. Yeah. It, it, it literally looked like somebody like somebody from major league baseball was like, all right, we're going to have this stupid players association weekend. Design me 30 jerseys by Monday. And the guy's like looking, he's like, it's Friday at five. I was about to go home for the weekend. It's like, yeah, you know, just 30 jerseys. will be fine. <laughs> okay, sure. He's paint. Just like, Open up paint. Yeah, just paint. Just, all right, just make the sleeves orange and the middle will be grayish, I guess. And then just put a number on there and then an Orioles logo. We're good. 
Done. Done. <laughs> I'm going to sell this for $175 on MLB.com. Yeah. All right. So anyway, anyway yeah, so that's back done. to the topic. So uh, on Friday night, uh, a all of these groups uh, had gathered and they went marching through the, the campus of UVA uh, shouting Sieg Heil and other um, white supremacist uh, things. Was Jeffrey Lord there? Uh, Jeffrey Lord wasn't there, although he also wasn't at CNN because he got fired. Uh, thankfully, finally, the guy who was accused of being able to take that if President Trump took a shit on his desk, yeah. he would still defend him. Yeah. Uh, God. Great moments in broadcasting. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they went marching through the campus. And I think DeRay. Uh, you know what's funny, though, about that moment, too? Anders and Cooper, like, you could see in his face, he's like, ah, I just went over a line. Eh, fuck it. <laughs> I mean, Anders <laughs> like, Cooper. Whatever. I got a trust fund to back up on it. This whole news thing doesn't work out. Like he just walks into every meeting just going like, you know, I'm a Vanderbilt, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, ah, oh, fuck it. Whatever, Anderson, do whatever you want. But uh, as a former guest of the show uh, back in episode 112, something like that, long time ago, um, check it out. It's in the uh, archives there at OTheAnthem.com. Uh, DeRay yes. uh, pointed out. If uh, if a group of Black Lives Matter activists went marching through a uh, school or college with torches, the National Guard would have been called out immediately. There would have been massive arrests and deaths and um, all sorts of violence. But of course, because it's um, off-duty policemen in their white gowns and uh, torches, then of course there was no there was no big police presence. There was no arrests. They were allowed to march freely through the campus mm. and. Listen, I my policy on life generally is that uh, all of the amendments should be treated equally. Free speech, free association, uh, the right to bear arms, the right to be free from search and seizure, uh, the right not to testify against oneself. They should all be treated equally. But we need to reach a point uh, where we are going to... The government should not get involved in, uh, in stopping speech of any kind. But I would not be opposed to a bunch of Antifa coming out there and just... Uh, laying waste to that entire parade of ridiculousness. Um, what was really missing was an MG 42 and about a thousand rands of ammunition, just mowing them down and making the, for once a machine gun could make America a better place. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to argue the exact opposite because we, so the, the, what really brought this to the attention of the, the mainstream media yeah. is the fact that, uh, one person on the let let's just say on the side of the right, yes, took his assumedly. car, assumedly, uh, took his car and rammed, uh, mowed through a crowd of a bunch of people, presumed to be on the left, yes, uh, in this situation, and people are upset because somebody died, uh, several dozen people were injured, yes, and uh, it was. Uh, everyone's calling it, you know, unnecessary and there shouldn't be violence and we're, we're all have the right to free speech, but not violence, uh, says that, you know, so, so on. I disagree. But I'm saying if somebody from, and again, I'm not trying to point at groups and say violence or anything like that, but I'm saying if somebody from black lives matter took their car and rammed into a bunch of clan members, yeah. we couldn't, there the the ability to say oh yeah go get them is lost in the violence i don't think so i disagree <laughs> i think that uh it's because it's you're good it's because you're jaded many. to one side though I'm, i it's, shouldn't shouldn't the shouldn't the clan members have the same right to assembly and free speech and they absolutely do the government should not get involved in any of these free associations or free speech. Yeah. But you have to know when you say something hateful, when you're coming out and supporting fascism, when you're coming out and supporting racism or white supremacy, but where's or the line? any of these things that you may get mowed down. That's what's going to happen. Where's the line? Well, so let me ask you this after the, the car. I mean, if, if, uh, the Red Sox won the World Series, and I went to Boston with a station wagon and just started mowing through the victory parade. Right. And I said I did it because the Red Sox have traditionally been a very racist organization, and their fans were, you know, yelling racial epithets at R Adam Jones that proves they're still racist. And yeah. I was just trying to eliminate another racist organization from this from this planet. You're gonna go to jail. Oh, I know, but I'm saying like nobody would nobody would hear me say that and go like, yeah, right on, fucking Red Sox. Like they're always that's because the Red Sox are not. The clan. Oh, they're I know, I know, but I'm saying like, it's at not what the same at thing? What if I'm doing it for the same reason though? The clan is racist. The Red Sox are racist. Why am I? Why am I? Uh... The clan's existence is to push racial supremacy and 
and uh, racism. So you have to be designed with the purpose of racism. Sure. You can't just have racism as like an additional overtone. To sure. It. Yes. Now, I mean, I would support you mowing down people in Boston for a whole other reason. <laughs> But as far as this is concerned, yes. I'm now, saying, what if what happens if the guy who who hits the protesters today, someone walks up with a snub nose thirty eight and just fires into the window of the car and kills him? Violence doesn't. Uh, we, we okay. So here's my problem, and here's where I think we should we should get at. Um, and I would like to state up front before I go any further, just so everybody knows. I am not condoning racism. I am not condoning hateful speech. This is a speech. great discussion because we have a Fasis <laughs> and an Antifa on the same podcast. I, it's fantastic. I, I, I deplore the Klan. I, I, I think that the Nazis are the stupidest thing ever, blah, 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 et cetera. Uh, what are you doing? I'm just seeing that one of your hands, you're... you're... <laughs> just put them both on the... <laughs> Both on the desk here, so you can see there's no, there's yeah, nothing, uh-huh. nothing out of sorts here. Is that a toe that you got crossed on there? Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, yeah. Um, but the more that we spend time trying to divide people further, the worse this is going to get. No, I'm not trying to divide people. I'm trying to bury people. That's that's the important thing. There, there, the, there is a level at which you are never going to convince them to have. They don't think that we are human. They don't. They think that people who are of a different race or a different ethnicity or from a different country or have a different sexual orientation are not some human of beings. them. Some of them. Every group that's out there has that belief. You're you're, you're, you're going to you're going to tell me that 100 percent of every single person who's out there on the right side of this argument mm-hmm. is convinced that black people are not human. If you, I mean, just take that take that one statement. Yes, one hundred percent. One hundred percent of them. What? So there's there's not even not there's not, not even human, a they chance are lesser. they are lesser than me because I am white. But there's not even a chance that there's any number of people in that group who are there because they are uh, Civil War historians and think that the South is. Would you? If, let's just say. No, that I'm, that's just saying, you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's there's you're, not you're one a, person there who's who's there for another guy. reason. You're yeah. a smart guy. Um. So uh, let's just say that you are the Civil War historian, right? Yeah. And you join you join a march with people with Nazi flags, with Identity Europa flags, yeah. with Confederate flags, and you go out there and stand with them, even though you're only there because you want to keep the statue up. I'm not saying it's likely. I'm right. not saying I'm saying it's there is zero percent chance. Everyone who's out there is a dedicated racist, a white supremacist, somebody who thinks that people I don't, of different I colors don't, and ethnicities are less than I them. don't I don't think that that labeling everybody the same is going to help any all you're doing here is dividing these edges further you're making everybody who isn't and again for lack of better terms either in the kkk or black lives matter feel like they're excluded from the conversation no i'm not i'm embracing the left and saying the only label i would like to put on all of you people on the right is a toe tag it's it's ridiculous the the violence has to stop the, Are you going to tell me that the, the people on the left have not made concessions to make themselves uh, appear to bring in more support that they haven't uh, that certain aspects? Of, listen, the people on the left are not even all on the left. Anarchists are on the right. Yeah. But they because they hate fascism so much, they've joined the left. So you have a group of just strict any fascist you have anarchists you have communists you have anarcho communists you have uh, social democrats you have black lives matter which is a social movement you have mm-hmm. democrats you have new democrats like hillary democrats you have old democrats you have this entire group this is a broad spectrum if, on the left if you're asking the american people yay or nay to to racism then you're going to get a huge swath of the American people involved in it. Right. But you're and not what going is to the answer. You're not going to get a large swath of American people to go out there and try and gun down Nazis or KKK members. They don't have to. You just have to sit quietly by while we do it. That's you know, it. There is no there is no there is no compromise to be had when it comes to racism. If you think that someone is less than you because of the color of their skin, their ethnicity, or their race, I'm never going to convince you otherwise. You have one solution. You convert to our way of thinking or you no How longer you know? are part of the discussion. How do you know? Because th- this does not happen. This, also, they are willing this doesn't, to beat people this doesn't, in the street. This doesn't help 
advance the conversation at all. I'm not looking to advance the conversation. I'm ending the conversation. There is this a false equivalency. Like we were just watching an episode what, of the newsroom where they point? said sometimes there are not two sides to have a discussion. This is one of them. There is no argument you can make that is justified to say racism is okay. That white people are in fact better than everyone else. That there is no argument. I, if you want to make that argument, I'm going to end your ability to argue. That is it. No. It's, Listen, because I'm you're not, never going to them. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a good argument. I'm not saying that it has has a place in civilized discussion. But I'm saying that there are people out there who feel this way, who aren't, even though they have horrible and tr- uh, horrid opinions, does not make them horrible people. No. I disagree completely. If you hold that opinion, you, you've never you are a horrible person. You've never you've never uh, been at like a family function oh, where like, where grand family where I'm granddad from. where granddad said like you know like where's that colored boy who was here last week and then you had to explain to to I've somebody else been like at that very you've had to explain like oh my dad my granddad is from a different time and he doesn't know what he's saying and he colored was more accepted then and if thirty year old me there was had had was at the family dinners that. 15 year old or 13 or 10 year old me was at, um, I would have thrown my own grandfather into this discussion. I throw members of my family currently into this discussion. They are, they do not deserve to stay alive and continue to argue. If you hold this opinion, at what point, what line do we, do we draw where it's where we're allowed to acceptably discuss something? Again, What's I'm not. What's the discussion? Hold on. What is the discussion? White people are kind of better than everyone else. No, no, but no, not no, no, no. Hold totally? on. Hold on. So, okay, uh, I and and many other people in this world will agree with you that that ra- there's no place in this world for racism. Okay, but there, if you're going to draw the line there, then there's going to have to be another line that gets drawn. Like what? Well, so uh, if I. Uh, let's say I said a statement like uh, women shouldn't be allowed to do the same things that men are because they're not physically strong enough to be able to do it. Okay. So that is an unpopular opinion that is separating the two sexes sure. with a old and stereotyped idea of of what people are capable of doing. Yeah. But am I, am I going to be killed because of that idea? Is there a even valid- though even though I could be proven wrong, even though I could, you could you could hypothetically bring me down to the gym and show me a woman who could outlift me. I could show basically any women and woman in this building could outlift you. Right, but I'm saying like <laughs> if I no, if I'm if I'm the type of person who's just like you know like women are weak and stupid and don't don't deserve to have the same sort of rights that men do, and okay, then you that- prove to me that that's. A that's false not you're, you're now making two different arguments. What the first argument you made is, but I, there are I have jobs an unpop- that women I'm, I'm, do. I'm, I'm committing an unpopular opinion okay. out in the out in the the in the world. There are jobs that women cannot do. This is a point of discussion because I we had a fire alarm go off at four in the morning this week. Mm-hmm. If there was an actual fire, if we were all succumb to smoke, I can't have a hundred and eighty pound fire female firefighter. I can't have a hundred and eighty pound male firefighter come up to this apartment. Because we're going to die. We're all going to die while they try to save us. Because no 180-pound person is firemen throwing me over their shoulder and carrying me out of the building. This is a physical trait. It's a physical job. It has a physical trait. There is an argument to be made, a, an actual argument. When but you how shift, dare, wait, wait, how wait, dare wait, you wait, say wait, that wait, women wait, aren't wait. capable of doing something that men are capable when of When you doing. shift to the all women, all women are less than men, all women can't do things that men can do. All of the all, the, all, the, all absolutism. Mm-hmm. Now you've switched to a place where there, there's going to be no converting you. So yes, of course, that I stand just so, as firmly for race. And so gender if and I was, if I was one of those people who said that all women can't do this because they're not as goodly as men, then you would be okay with the idea of taking me out because yes. I am so wrong. Yes, absolutely. That this does not. This is just going to at, get to a certain point where everybody gets killed because uh, I think red jelly beans are the best jelly beans. Well, you don't know shit about jelly beans, and then you get killed. Like, at what point do you? There has to be a line. If you're going to say that uh, racism is our line, fine. If you're going to say that sexism is our line, fine. We need to know the lines before we start doing this. Just so everyone's clear, uh, red jelly beans and racism, same thing to this guy. But um, I, I'm saying, there's 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 no you, what you're saying is it killing killing fascist killing racist is there is there racism sexist is the same as arguing over jelly beans no but I'm saying it, w- at what point racism is is 
jaded to is, is has many different lines too. Okay, like what? I mean, there can be the the line of uh, black people are far in superior to us and therefore must die okay. or should work for us and be our slaves well, or whatever. Free, yes. Yeah. And that can be an opinion that's wrong, or there could just be like, uh, you know, Malaysians are lazy. Like, is what? Which one of those racist statements is too far, and which one is not? Because the thing that you are not understanding is that the second statement that Malaysians are Asian or are uh, lazy or Asian or Asian, uh, <laughs> they are lazy, is based in the same belief as the first. It just hasn't had the opportunity to ruminate down to the first. So you don't it's think what you, you don't think you would be able to take the Malaysians as Asian. Ugh. See, Malaysians is lazy person and be able to convert them and make them see the error of their ways. I don't think no, because that is because there basis. are people there are people who fought for the Nazis in Germany who were able to convert their opinions after the fact and realize that they were wrong. Not every person who fought for the Nazis wasn't uh, right shared their belief. But you're saying that your literal opinion is that everybody who was there on the right side of this argument, yeah. Was a racist and needed to be needed to be done away Absolutely. with. Absolutely, if we could have just dropped an airburst bomb into that park and so, taken out everybody. So, literally anybody who fought for the Nazis in World War II should have had the same. Absolutely. Despite they did. whether or not whether they or not absolutely did during the whether war, whether or not the they would be able on. to whether or not they would be able to uh, become a productive member of society. Yes, you are all right with just. Wasting them right then. Right. I, I, because in war, that's what you do. You kill your enemy. And yeah. right now we are in the midst of a war. The war is going on so for it, the future of so the So the war is over, but you're willing to kill every single Nazi in what order to. What war is to, over? What war is over? World War II. It, that war is over, yes. The but, war, we have a war going like, on But right I'm saying now. because every single person who was at one point signed up to be a Nazi is still a Nazi in your mind and no. deserves to. Did, that's not what I said. No, but I'm saying your, your point of. Being able to take out people who even have the possibility, the okay. right to be able to change their mind or change their opinion. When we stormed the beaches of Normandy, yeah. did we walk up to every single soldier and say, do you really believe in what your government's doing? No, because that was in in the, in the acts of war. Okay. Right now, we are at war. We are at war for the future of a country. And if you stand on that side of the line, you will be killed. And that is that. If you don't want to be killed, and the whole the whole encouragement is this: if enough people, if enough fascists, if enough racists, if enough supremacists die, that people will convert. They'll say, At "I what? don't hold these beliefs strongly enough to risk my life. I'm going to go home because you know what? That that black guy over there just killed a bunch of my white friends. Maybe they aren't as inferior as I said. I, whatever the fucking reason is, if you kill enough of them, you stomp the rest out. This is a war going on right now. What we saw this today is, was is, a skirmish, a skirmish." In the war, this is this is a completely preposterous argument. What? Again, it's using the same mentality. During World War II, we shot at people on the other side. During this war, that is arguably more important for the future of our country. What kind of country are we going to build in the 21st century? Then, if you're standing on that side of the line, you are an enemy, and I will do everything that I can to end your life because your existence is a threat this, to me and if, my future. If this opinion was so strong, why did it take America so long to get involved into World War II? Because they, they had to make it personal. They made it personal to us. Yeah. This battle that we're fighting right now has been personal and is personal to us now. We don't need to take that second step. It is personal. And I, you have allies. Again, there is these two guys. I mean, well, he supports the, the police. But this guy here has nothing but benefit from everything that they're saying. What kind of, what kind of advantage would I have in a world where uh, white supremacy ma made laws, where racism was the law, where I, I could do anything I wanted to do to any person you're, of color you're because taking, of white? You're taking my argument that we shouldn't kill them as reason why I'm supporting racist tendencies, but you that's are. not the case. You, you, if you, that's not if the you case. stay silent, I, if you stay silent, you side with the oppressor. That no. is how it works. No. Yes. No, absolutely not. You're saying we should have a dialogue with people who don't think that the other side is human beings. They think of them as lessers. A dialogue that it, it doesn't have, there's, Many other different kinds of speech. There's not just dialogue. There's monologue. There's soliloquy. There's other things. You can you can agree to not listen to what they have to say. You can not make part of their argument part of the the greater communication that we're having as a society. But you can't 
under any circumstances, just kill people based off their opinions, even if their opinions are some of the worst that we have. That is exactly what the Civil War because was. Because at what point, at what point do we draw the line? That's the problem. That's that, at the you can't you can't answer that question. That's the problem. At I, what point do I we draw the line? Can. When you when you bring in an absolutist argument, that is the line. The line is the absolutism. So if I say that the Ravens are better and the Steelers are terrible, that's an absolutist argument. And Steeler fans are allowed to just pick me is off. Is this really? The, the, no, no, you're, no. You're, what you're, I'm saying, like, what uh, we we start these arguments with little things. We start these, uh, uh, and literally everything goes this way. No, no. We it, start with you're, something you're, small, you're doing, and then over time it becomes a bigger deal. You went to the neo-Nazi school of argument, and so you find the most uh, what is it, <sighs> argumentative absolutum or absolutum ridiculum, where you find the most ridiculous example that fits into it and try to wedge it in there to be the same thing. Because Steelers and Ravens is exactly the same thing as neo-Nazi no, but, racists no, who want not. to end but the I'm, black race. Okay, so who okay. want to end the Jewish race? Okay, who want to end but, but, every lesser? Hold race. Hold up a second. Hold on a second. So, uh, uh, the American for Disabilities Act is passed sure. with the idea of making an even and fair playing ground for everybody, regardless of whether or not you are fully bodied or disabled in some kind. Sure. And with it come certain parts of, like, you have to have stairways that are certain, or uh, walkways that are a certain length, and you have to have uh, ramps that go into every entrance and blah, 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 blah. And we all agree that it's for the best because it yeah. makes it equal for everybody. But then there are things where we can't have, uh, we can't build a ramp on this old property because it was built before wheelchairs were around and there's no way of getting a wheelchair through this old ancient okay. temple or whatever. And then we have to, pers- or like, it, it, uh, there's, there's reasons why we would have Things that wouldn't work. So you're you know? we're grandfathering in the old racist. And no, saying I'm that saying, they, yeah, but they I'm grew saying, up in a different time. So we're just going to continue to let them to spout their hate and poison the next generation and the one after that. Because here's the thing: the building. Because because I'm saying when when it started, they were just like anybody. Any new construction starts with. Uh, this is the point I'm trying to make. Any new construction has to be ADA compliant. Yes. One hundred percent agree. Absolutely agree. But then they start to try and make. Everything ADA compliant, which I'm not against, but if you're trying to disrupt or get an uh, existing structure to fit into something that it was never designed to fit into, then you're going to have problems. If you're trying to create a system where there's no more racism and you're going to kill them all, okay, where does this end? At what point are we just talking about the people who are racist right now? Is there going to be a new discussion about uh, different levels of racism at which you're allowed to be killed at a certain point? You, what levels of race? They, again, you're creating a duplicitous. You're creating a false dupli, a, a false equivalency where there is in your mind some argument on the other side that is valid. What argument for racism is valid? You're you're taking. You're saying there's. You're saying there's. No. Uh, there are levels so, of racism. What argument for racism is valid? Because that assumes that if there are levels and they can't all be so, thrown into one bucket, there, there must be something that's valid. There was there was a situation last night where you screamed racist. Okay. Would that fall on line? What did, what did I scream racist? With the about? Uh, 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 Asians, uh, we were talking about how uh, different people, uh, how like white people have difference telling the differences, but facial expressions in Asians. You remember that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And how it's like a proven scientific thing that like certain people of certain races have trouble distinguishing characteristics of other races. Yeah. And you screamed out racist. Now right. it was a joke. Yes. But is that is, at any point is anything that even, even slightly racist become of a reason not. to kill people? Like because where, that is, where not, is the line? Because, That's the problem. You can't just say, kill the racist because then you got to distinguish what makes a racist able to live and a racist able to die. So again, your, your equivalency you're creating. And I'm not, is that and he, I'm not making the argument that, that Nazis and KKK members like we're seeing in Charlottesville right now are the thing, but at some point we're going to have West Virginia white pride show up to something. Yeah. And they're not necessarily and I don't know anything about West Virginia white pride. They they're are. probably just KKK members. Yes. But I'm saying like, hypothetically, they could just all be really proud of being white and they're not a racist organization. They're just really proud of being white. Are we going to kill them too? Yes. Because they're not making racist statements. They're not saying that anyone is less than I'm just really proud of being white. Uh, okay. And, and 
with, first of all, there is no such thing as white. Being proud to be white is uh, is an overture to say you are better than everyone else. That's just how it works. Second of all, no, you are, you're creating equivalency there's, there's between... There's people who say they're proud to be black. Okay. Black is a race. White is not. Black is, is a stand-in for African American. It's okay. for people who were brought to this country in servitude, uh, forcibly brought here to serve the white, the uh, the landed gentry. Right. White is nothing. What are you white? No. Do you have pride in your whiteness? No. What do you have pride in? I have pride in my Americanism. Or where are your people from? Like Ireland. Or Ireland. Yeah. Right. You can be proud to be Irish. I could be proud to be English or yeah. proud to be German or proud to be Irish myself or proud to be Scottish or any of the 11 or 12 different uh, ethnic, ethnic groups that make up my background. Yeah. That is being proud to be a person. A black is a stand-in for African-American. It stands in for people who were brought here forcibly to serve landed gentry. Be saying I'm proud to be white is saying we are better because of our skin color because your white is not the same as my white is not the same as his white. We're all from different places. And if you say I'm proud to be Italian, we know a lot of jerk offs who are really proud to be Italian. Yeah. And I don't think of that as a racist statement the same way that I don't think of uh, I'm proud to be black as a racist statement because you're talking about pride in where your people come from. I think it's stupid. You're all ridiculous, but nonetheless. But I mean, at what point does... It's it's a stupid statement to say I'm proud to be white, right? Yes, it is. It, it is not a true statement, and it is a stupid statement. But I'm saying, like, if somebody is just a dumb white American, yeah, you know, of fifteen different co- of mutt stock yeah, like me, yeah. yeah, and they're just like, I'm really happy that I'm white. I'm really proud that I'm white. Does what are that you mean proud you t- of? No, but I'm saying, I'm just saying that uh, somebody somebody who is not racist but made a stupid statement. Makes it out loud. And then are you going to put them in the stocks and kill them? I remember the term. Reductio ad absurdum. You are increasing this argument to its ridiculous point to try and make it seem invalid. I'm not. I'm trying to come. Here is the line. There has to be, there has to be a line. line. There has to be a line for you to be able to make this argument. Here is the line. Do you think that women are less than men simply because they are less than men? What? Do you think that women are less than men simply because they exist as less than men? No. Okay. Do you think that people of color are less than you simply because you are white and they are people of color? No. Do you think that someone from another country is less than you simply because they are from another country? No. All right. Do you think that someone of a different ethnic group is less than you because they are the different ethnic group from you? No. Okay. If you are on the no side of that equation, you're fine. That is a part where we can have a discussion about any questions to the left of that. If you are to the right of that, you are. it is free reign on you. So any, absolutism. So a a yes to any one of those questions, yeah, is automatic death. Not. Auto, I mean, it's you're setting yourself up for death. If I had my druthers, yeah, automatic death. If you answer yes to those questions, I can just shoot you in the head right there. That would be. That's wonderful. ridiculous. That none of, violence does not fix this problem. As uh, Miranda, who's in the uh, chat discussion, welcome Miranda. Thank you for joining us. Said discussion doesn't change minds nearly as well as experience. You can't. You can speak until you die, and you won't change the mind of someone who believes that they are absolutely right. And then you're left with zero change. Talking to a racist doesn't make them less racist. It is a deeply held belief that is 100% right. It is so deeply held that they are willing to go out and march because they're proud to be white, and they think that black people or people of color in general are less than them. There is nothing you can do except for take them out of the discussion because there is no discussion to be had. And they are poisoning our country and our, the future of our country there, is at risk. There, there are so many things that are poisoning our country. I'm trying to deal with one. I'm starting a place where we can draw a very clear black line and say, if you're on the I, other side of I it, think we are, we are going to end this. I would, I would make the argument that the, the language that we're hearing on CNN, I presume Fox News and MSNBC because we were just watching CNN, mm-hmm. uh, is just as bad as what's going on because they're discussing it like two polar ends of a competing argument. Okay. They're trying to make the argument that uh, racism has its place and that, that the counter protests have their place and that this skirmish turned violent between the two of them. There's no argument. The, the 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 problem that we're having here is that there's no no place where we can all talk about this reasonably. There is there's no, no place for the middle. There's no place for the there, middle because there is no middle. There is no middle. 
If you are on one side of the discussion, you think that people there's, are less there is than certainly, you. There is certainly a middle. I'm not a racist, and I don't think that we should just kill racists. I'm in the middle of these two pains. Do you think that, that racism is a thing that we should support? No. Okay, so. But I don't you think killing our... racists is part of is something I want to support either. Then stay home. You don't have to be out there while we do it. I don't want you be able to be able to walk around after the fact either. And that's who's saying that we'd be able to walk around. I'm saying we're solving a problem. Sometimes there are consequences when you take that kind of action. If the guy, so you're going to you're going to have people out there, trigger men, who are willing to take jail time for killing a Nazi. That sounds like a pretty good plan to me. Sure, why not? You kill the fastest. If we need to have a fastest killed, you have guys who are willing to go and do the time. We try to sneak you around. We try to keep you out of trouble. But if it happens, you're willing to take the time. Sure. If that driver of that car who plowed down the, the counter protesters, again, if someone had walked up with a snub nose 38, shot all six rounds into the window and killed that guy. Yeah. That, he would have disappeared into that crowd and no one would have said a fucking thing about it. Oh my God. It's so weird. Somebody came up and shot, but we don't have video of it. Nobody saw anything. We have no witnesses. Cause fuck that guy because that guy does not deserve to continue to breathe. And if you, there are people who are willing, people like me, theoretically, uh, who are willing to go out there, risk their lives, give their lives for this ideal. And they're also willing to give up their freedom for this ideal. And if you aren't willing to do that, great. Stay home. We will drag you kicking and screaming across the finish line, and in the end, you will thank us because the country will be better off. I won't. With these people I, out of the discussion. The the violence does not solve anything. Well, tell it that does, to no, it doesn't. War. It doesn't because he, all right. Violence violence solved the fastest problem the last time around. I I don't want to speculate about what what the what the coming days will bring based off of this nonsense. Yeah, but if. If tonight a whole bunch of racists start mowing down the left, mm -hmm. uh, just taking their guns and just going through the streets and killing people on the left, then they're making, they're doing this, they're, they're believing so strongly in their message that they're taking to heart what you are, what yeah. you are proposing. That we need to stand up for this moment in time and we need to take care of all the people who aren't willing to allow the white race to continue and be successful and blah, 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 and whatever bullshit. But I'm saying, like, we would look at that moment. We would look at that moment where they're mowing down people with their guns and saying, oh, Jesus Christ, this has just gotten worse. Right. This is that nobody would look at that and go like, oh, thank God this has gotten to violence. Like, no, we we I need mean, to be some able people to. Would. We need to be able to settle this without violence. There is no settling it without violence. Either there is their settling. continued existence, the continued you, existence you of this make way it, of life. You make it so that these these statements are so sickening and abhorrent that you can't live in everyday society if you go out and say something like that. Yes, if you You're if, absolutely if you are on the internet, if you are on Twitter, and you make some sort of statement about any race, and it's it, it just it it passed the the pornography test of it, I know it when I see it. Yeah, if it's a, a racist statement, and I know that it's terrible the second that I see it, then I'm fine if that holds over you, and you aren't able to get apartments or jobs or anything else like that. That would happen, you know, like if you had a uh, conviction on your record. Okay. You know, I'm fine with a racist statement holding with you like that. Okay. That would be a good first step. Sure. Except for that guy is still going to have children. He's still going to be out marching. He's still going to be spewing hate. He's still going to be inspiring the next generation to continue on this the, the this entire lifestyle. This belief system continues to live because they continue to live. You're, so long as there is breath in their body, they will continue to fight for you white don't supremacy. Think, you don't think that if somebody kills a racist... Then somebody who is on the the line between racism and not racism is going to. They're not going to be more people who go to the racist side because they're no. worried about you murdering the. No, because I think if anything, you will have people who do not have very strongly held beliefs who exit from that that movement. Now, do they join this the movement on the left? Probably not, because they're not about violence. You're not about violence, and that's fine. But in the end, having this discussion moves people into the middle, I'm fine with that. Because I make you question, how strongly do you believe? How strongly do you believe that white people are better? Because if I don't, you really believe I don't it, think, you would be willing I don't, to fight and die for it the same I way I do. Uh, 
You're, what we, your argument is, is that to, somebody we on have the fe- to. Wait, 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 wait. Your argument is somebody on the fence is going to say, look at those left Antifa guys who just killed a fascist. Well, that really makes me want to be racist more than I use, uh, than I am right now. That's what you're saying. That's no, it's it's going to be like, why the fuck do they think they have the right to kill people based off of their opinions? Okay, and that's going to push them towards the racist propaganda. They're, it's going to push. Gonna make- it's going to push them towards the side that was formerly racist. Formerly racist. Yeah, they're, they're still racist. No, sure, many of them are still racist. Yeah, but there's also going to be a lot of people on that side who are like, "What the fuck is the violence doing to?" Like, I'm against the violent left that is trying to okay. eliminate these people for no good reason other I've, than they stated an unpopular opinion. And I've been talking about this for the last 15 years. The way that real change happens is because you have people willing to do violence on the far left. You have a moderate left who really just wants dialogue for change. And then you have the status quo that remains on the right. How do you shift it? By having There's those not, three factors. Hold on. The, you're, you're talking about the status quo on the right. Like Donald Trump wasn't elected by this this awakening of racists and different left and right, different left and right. I'm creating a new. But I'm spectrum. saying like I'm saying part of part of the reason why these people are out there marching like it's no big deal is because Trump himself has made being a Klan member, being yes. a racist, yes. something that is more acceptable in today's society right. than and it we was are going to 10 make years it, ago. We are going to make it unacceptable again because if it's worth your life, go out and march. Otherwise, you probably should stay home. People shouldn't die because of something, because of an opinion they hold, regardless of how unpopular it may be. Tell that to the Iraqis, to the Vietnamese, to the Nazis in World War II, to the communists in World War II, to... The Kaiser's men in the First World War. I mean, at what point are we going to draw a line? You're you're okay with state sponsored? So what? No, but I mean, like you're you're not with regular. You're okay with people. So you're okay with people committing a crime, and you're going to be personally fine with them serving punishment, even though sure, if they get caught, (laughs) I won't be the one bearing witness on them. I'm not going to be the one telling because fuck twelve. Don't tell them shit. Disappear into the crowd and then you go on about your life. But in the end, my point was this. I've been saying for the last 15 years, the way that you have real change, the reason that we say, look at Mahatma Gandhi, look at Martin Luther King, look at the great change that they brought about, isn't because they shifted society. Because there were people to the left of them who were willing to be, to, to use violence in order to change things. And what happens is those in the middle, sh- those in the, the non-active, the non-political people, yeah. shift towards nonviolence and say, this is the way to go. This is about discussion. But without the violent people on the, the outside of that movement, you never get that shift. You shift status quo by having people willing to do violence and saying, if there is a new status quo, it needs to be this, 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 the, what the nonviolent group believes in. But without the violence, you're not going to have that shift. Everyone's going to stay in their same positions. If we just try nonviolence against this kind of racist belief, it's good. Everything's going to remain the same. You cannot get change without violence. Viol- no, throughout the history, there, throughout all of history, there has never been political or social change without violence. Vietnam didn't end without violence. Uh, the uh, that was Jim war. Crow didn't. The, yeah, but there was violence at home. Yeah. That stopped the war. It wasn't anything that happened in Vietnam that stopped the Vietnam War. It was what would happen at home. There was nonviolent protests for eight years. Nothing happened. Then the weather underground uh, pops up and starts having violence on behalf of the end the war. Now we have a social we have a social shift and the war the war ends. Social changes, whether it's getting the British out of India or getting Jim Crow to end in the South, Voting Rights Act, all of those things happened because of violence. If you uh, (laughs) what what. What the problem needs to be is that the the racism needs to be so unpopular that it just eliminates you from society. We're saying the same thing. I'm eliminating them from society. But we can't we can't be violent about it. What are we going to do? We're going to give them Georgia and let them go just have their own racist ass fucking country down there? Listen, if if you're going to promote that you're willing to kill people based off of their beliefs, then why is that any different than a hate crime? It's the same. And who is the who is committing all of these hate crimes? Oh, I'm not saying that the who's committing the hate. Crimes? I'm saying I'm not saying that the, who's I'm, committing the hate crimes. The the people on the right, the because KKK, because they are the, willing yeah. to use violence. We are using violence in return. That is the extent of it. This is so a you war would, that you is would be fought. willing you'd be willing to charge anybody on the left who kills a member of the KKK with a hate crime. No, 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 because they are upholding the ideals of society by eliminating those voices and, that in your opinion. 
you're t- okay. So racism is the ideals of our society. That's what we should shoot for in the 21st century in America. Sure, but I'm saying at the very Wait, end of raci- the day, you think that racism should be what we shoot for in I'm 21st sorry, century I, America? I I, I missed I misheard what you just said. Uh huh. Yeah. Obviously not the, the truth case. Truth comes out. The truth comes out. <laughs> no, I I think I I don't think that racism has any part in society. Okay. And I don't think that we should be allowed to, you know, like make racist statements or propose racist ideas. But at the same time. I'm not going to take away your right to have an opinion on something. Oh, I'm not taking away anyone's and, right to have an opinion on and anything. If you, and if you say something preposterously dumb because you're a racist, then I'm just going to think of you less. Okay. But the problem is that you think I'm not going to kill you. And a 10-year-old child says this is a valid way. And the, the racism follows us into the 22nd century. It continues on to the next generation and the generation after that. There's only one way to end it. There's there's no discussion that will ever change minds. There's only one way to end the poison that has been killing our country and killing this, this place that we live since 1620. Ra- violence does not fix it. Violence doesn't fix anything, right? It doesn't. Fi- it's not going to fix this. Again, what makes you? Every, what makes you think that this is going? Every so like every you don't great- you don't think you don't think that the that the story that leads off Fox News a month from now if this turns into violent upheaval isn't about everyday American citizens getting gunned down for having unpopular opinions next on cha- next on Hannity I'm sure that they'll spin it that way yes but I'm saying like that it, it's it's not a, it, it, you are proclaiming it a spin because you're on that side right but it's it it literally is. Everyday Americans who are getting gunned down for their opinions. Do everyday Americans go out and march with Confederate flags and Nazi, no. Nazi emblems? No. Then not. Then everyday Americans aren't getting killed. How is that? The, these are these are people who have opinions, albeit unpopular. Yes. They're not allowed to have opinions anymore. No, they're absolutely allowed to. They, they can feel free to push their opinion as much as they want, and we're, I'm going to be feel free just, to push a 45 caliber round into the back of their we're, skull. We're just going to be going around and around on right, this because, forever. Because, because you think that they that racism has a place in society. That no, they should I be think able that violence feel, doesn't. Right, and I and despite despite all of the evidence I can give you, you fail to see that all great social, economic, and political change happens thanks to violence. No, it doesn't. No. How does their peace in uh, Northern Ireland? How was the Irish question finally settled? I know you know Irish history better than anything else. So how was <laughs> how was how was uh, the peace in Ireland or how was I, the Irish issue finally settled? <laughs> You're making the argument that it was finally settled. Well, it was. It just hasn't. It hasn't been an issue for a while. Right. It hasn't been an issue for a while. Right. But, but in the end. The violence of the IRA in the, the late 1980s and early 1990s is what brought about peace, is what brought about the current st- uh, political solution. But it hasn't, it didn't make the relationship between Ireland and England any better. It didn't, no, but it solved the issue of the time, which was English but, oppression of the Irish in Northern Ireland. They got a political voice, they got social change, they got uh, a. a Yet Ireland is still split in two. Right. It didn't solve the final Irish problem, but it made the Irish who are living in English lands have have a uh, participation in their government, which was the whole fucking point. Well, how? how, It's not. It's not. It didn't. Listen, we're 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 never going. You're never going to agree because you refuse to look at the evidence that clearly supports my proposition. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that they're. Why did Occupy Wall Street uh, fail? uh, 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 Why did Occupy Wall Street fail? Because they they had a terrible structure and they couldn't get their shit together. It became one very understandable point. And by the end of the first week, it was 1000 crazy ideas In because nobody had, there was no structure there, but there was bankers, no- bankers wrecked the economy in 2008. Why has there been no change since then? Occupying not this specific occupy wall street. Why did occupy fail when other previous social political change has occurred. Because there was no concise argument. Because there was no violent movement pushing no, the status no, quo. That toward. would not have solved anything. Sure it would have. No, it wouldn't have. No, because it's the same it's the same goddamn argument. And at what if point, you're willing to kill At what point so you're talking about Occupy Wall Street and this is like the same exact thing. Yes. So everything if, is if exactly Occupy the same. if Occupy had gone up and just started randomly gunning down investment bankers. Yes then that would have solved all no. our problems? No. If a different, third different group had said, 
We are tired of the bankers joining. Occupy? No, no. Occupy is the nonviolent protest right. group. Let's say that uh, the Robbists, let's call them that, <laughs> the Robbists, uh, over on the far left, started gunning down investment bankers. Yeah. You, Mr. Average American, mm-hmm. would say to yourself, not really for the violence. Don't want to uh, don't want to be shooting these investment bankers, but maybe we should address this somebody social who, and economic problem. Somebody who problem. did nothing except for accept a job. Right. But maybe we should talk about the social I mean, he might, problem. the guy you just gunned down probably had very little to do with the failing of the economy. But it brings... The guy the, in the boardroom had a lot more to do with it, yet you're shooting down the guy who just works there. But then you're open to a discussion about social and political change. And you would never we gotta, support... We gotta, we gotta call this one. It's, Rob, I'm, I'm sorry that the last three... 2,000 years of history supports my proposition that violence along with a nonviolent political movement actually makes change. But I'm sorry, that's what happens. And when you don't have violence, it fails. When you do have violence, it succeeds. India, the UK, America, Arab Spring, everywhere that this has been tested, it is true. Where there is not only nonviolence, political movements fail. Where there is violence, political movements succeed. Oh, would you look at that? Oh, the anthem.com. Corey to the anthem.com. Oh, the anthem on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the listener line, 443-219-7595. What's that number again? 443-219-7595. Do you want to uh, like clack your uh, heels together before you or maybe make a hand gesture nah. while you're doing that? Nope. You sure? Mm-mm. Feeling like maybe that would be appropriate. But nope. anyway, you can find me on your social networks at Robert N. Cheek. Make sure you check out robertncheek.com where you can find links to my political blog where you'll find much more of things just like this. Hey, KB's here. Foundingthefuture.us. Hi, KB. <laughs> Hi, KB. Um, but check out foundingthefuture.us. You can also find links to the news website and the books, which are available on Amazon. Buy Rob's books. And if you, any of this really appeals to you, you are really going to love my books. So make sure you check those out uh, on Amazon.com. Uh, you can get those. Well, I would say I think we've done good here today. but I st- I'm not going to close the show <laughs> until you say it right. Say it right. <laughs> I think we've done good here today. You're goddamn right we have. <laughs> Well, we've done something. I don't know if it's good. But as always, you've been listening to the OD Anthem podcast, part of the OD Anthem digital network. For Corey, the fascist, this is Rob, the communist, saying, have a great week, everybody. See ya. (laughs) Best episode ever. (laughs)